Over a billion people around the world suffer from some kind of brain disease. As the population of the world ages, I think this is going to increase. Alzheimer's, migraine, spinal cord injury, depression, schizophrenia, Parkinson's disease, the list goes on and on. How do we treat these diseases? Well, the problem is the brain is so complicated. We often don't know where to begin. My hope is that someday we can achieve this understanding and maybe shed some light, no pun intended, on what it means to be human and to have a mind. Optogenetics is a way we control brain cells with light. Brain cells compute using electrical pulses. We found that by installing molecules in the brain cells that act like solar panels, that is, they convert light into electricity, we could control the activity of brain cells. By activating brain cells with light, we can turn them on and figure out how they trigger a behavior or a disease state or a therapeutic state. By turning neurons off, we can figure out what they're needed for. For example, if we delete them, does it impair a memory or change an emotion or cancel out a pathological state of the brain? Basically, by discovering a pattern of brain activity that makes the brain better, one can try to figure out new ways of treating brain diseases. To translate this to human efficacy, of course, one then has to discover a non-invasive brain stimulation method or a drug that can create that same pattern. I trained in a bunch of different scientific fields. I started college relatively young when I was 14 years old and studied chemistry for two years. And then I transferred to MIT and switched to studying physics and electrical engineering and computer science. So I got a firm grounding in many fundamental scientific disciplines. But all along, I was attracted to questions that bordered upon philosophy. And so naturally, uh, the brain presented a great challenge. And when I did my PhD, I switched to neurosciences at Stanford, where I studied motor learning, how the brain learns to control our movements. I started graduate school in the Stanford Neurosciences PhD program in the fall of 1999. Around spring of 2000, a fellow student, Carl Dyswath, and I met, and we started talking about how we could control the brain. We started just going through all the laws of physics, thinking about ways to deliver energy to the brain. Light, of course, seemed like it would be the best if you could use it, because it's so fast, and of course, you could aim it at individual cells. The next question became, could we make a molecule that converts light into electricity, or could we find one? as so we started reading lots of papers. I became quite fascinated by a class of molecule known as the microbial opsin, which are these molecules that have been studied since the early 1970s that convert light into electrical signals. One of these lines of research was spearheaded by Peter Hegemon in the early 1990s, studying green algae. They have a protein called channerodopsin, which is one of these microbial opsins. It converts light into electrical signal and helps the green algae swim around to photosynthesize optimally. Geerd Nagel and Ernst Bomberg have been doing physiology and characterizing the ion channels in oocytes and in culture mammalian cells. So they joined forces to identify the channerodopsin 2 uh, gene and to show in culture mammalian cells that you could depolarize their cells with blue light. Gera Miesenbach independently had been trying Drosophila phototransduction cascade. These are the opsins and associated genes from the fruit fly eye. And he independently showed that you could control cultured mammalian cells by expressing that genetic cascade in the cells and shining light on them. In the summer of 2004, we started in earnest trying out the Chenorodopsin 2 gene, which we had obtained from Geerd Nagel. We put the gene into neurons, cultured in a dish. Carl did the transfections, I did the physiology and the illumination with light, and serendipity struck. This molecule, which came from algae, not only expressed in neurons, but localized to the membrane, the outer surface of the neuron, which is where the electrical signals are. And it was safe enough, fast enough, and efficacious enough that it basically worked on the first try. Over the years that followed, we worked independently and collaborating with each other to improve the toolkit. In 2007, we published a paper showing that other members of the microbial opsin family could be put into neurons and be used to turn neurons off with pulses of light. And over the years following, we went on to show that many other members of the family of microbial opsins can be used to activate non-invasively, to activate neurons very quickly, to shut off neurons non-invasively, and to control multiple pathways in the brain with multiple colors of light. All of us amongst the founders of optogenetics have been sharing the tools freely from day one. My point of view is, if nobody uses the tools, what's the point of doing the work? 
because there's so many things that need to be solved. The nature of memory, the origins of emotions, how to cure intractable diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and spinal cord injury. Brain diseases affect something like a billion people around the world, including schizophrenia, addiction, severe depression, chronic pain, and the list goes on and on and on. So partly we gave the tools to everybody because that's the point of making a tool, is to have people use it. But there's also a moral purpose here as well. There's so many problems of the brain that we don't know how to solve. No brain disease can be fully cured. And so by sharing the tools and helping people discover how brain diseases might be treated or cured, I feel like we're serving a moral purpose that's important in biology and medicine. I have two hopes. One is that by making maps of the brain using expansion microscopy and perturbing the brain using optogenetics, we can really set the field of neuroscience on the path to cure all brain diseases. These diseases are feared not just because they affect our time to live, they change who we are, how we relate to friends, family, and loved ones even. The other thing I care about is philosophy. Can we understand how the brain generates the mind? I hope if we can make maps of the brain that are very detailed and perturb the brain to figure out what the cells do, we could try to, in a computer, simulate things like thoughts and feelings, emotions and decisions, and understand a bit more detail about how the brain generates the mind. These two hopes, curing all brain diseases and understanding how the brain generates the mind, are both very personal hopes for me as well. Uh, I started really wanting to address philosophical problems through science when I was a child. I was only about eight years old at the time. And so this has been a multi-decade long dream for me to see if we can really understand the mind and repair it.